welcome everybody. My name is Andy Rivenus. I'm a product manager with uh, Oracle for database and memory. And this is the database and memory office hours session. I guess ask Tom. And here's our, I always like to point out our um, main screen. So this is what you would have connected to. But if you missed um, missed it, and I always like to remind folks that at the, if you scroll down, our previous office hours sessions are here along with uh, resources, which I'll probably talk about, but uh, the blog, um, uh, obviously uh, this Ask Tom Office Hours site, but uh, uh, one of the kind of neat things is our Live Labs environment. So if you wanna try this out for yourself, you can do that in our Live Labs environment. You don't have to have cloud credits or you can just, it's free. You can basically, as long as you have an oracle.com uh, ID, which doesn't cost you anything, you can, um, run a tenancy on, on Oracle Cloud, and you don't have to pay for it. So I really um, uh, encourage people to give that a try. So with that, we'll um, do a new share, and we'll move over. If I can find it, there it is. Move that out of the way. And so what I wanted to do today is I wanted to talk about some SQL Monitor updates. Um, and again, my name, uh, Andy Rivenus, my email's there. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, uh, our blog URL, and I will post all of this into my GitHub area, which is a, there's a link at the end of the presentation, or you can just go to our resources page and click on it there. If you just, the only, I guess you have to remember, is just that blog URL and you can get there. Um, Excuse me. But anyways, um, uh, what I wanted to try to focus on today, we've done, I did a previous session with Maria on SQL Monitor back in 2019. And so there'll be a, a, a little bit of repeat, but not much. And so what I wanted to do, um, one was emphasize that when you're dealing with database and memory, it's really key that you use the, the SQL Monitor active report version of the SQL Monitor reports, and we'll kind of go over that and why. But also there's been some really nice features added to SQL Monitor besides the, the, the change in format from uh, Flash to Jet. But, um, and I want, wanted to highlight that because to be honest, it's I, I found out about it talking to uh, one of the optimizer folks and um, I didn't realize some of these features were in there. And it makes it much easier to, to navigate through a SQL Monitor active report. And of course, I'm biased from a database of memory perspective, but just in, in general, this is useful information even without database of memory being involved. So I think it's worthwhile to explore this a little bit deeper. Um, and then again, one of my main things is it's funny how we'll ask folks to give us a, you know, a, a, with database of memory, uh, an execution without in memory, enabled and then within memory enabled and we get I get all sorts of uh, explain plans and um, all sorts of different formats but what we're what I'm always looking for what development's always looking for are the active reports because we really want to focus on where time is spent in the execution plan and um, uh, while it is possible to do that with SQL tracing and some of the products that are available um, outside of Oracle uh, even with TK Prof, it's not anywhere near as uh, uh, easy to deal with as it is in an active report. And so that's kind of one of my big messages was give us an active report. Don't give me text or HTML. I'm going to kind of try to go through why and hopefully convince you that that's the right way to, to tackle uh, per either performance problems or just seeing benefits in, uh, in the case of database of memory and making that easier to navigate. And then of course, we'll throw in some of the nice little features that help you do that. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and with that, uh, just a, I, I threw a couple slides in. We'll, well, actually, I'm not gonna do all slide work today, but um, just for you know the, the very basic explain plan. You know, for a very simple query like this, it's pretty easy to see what's going on. But when you have uh, queries that run hundreds of lines or pages, you know, it's very difficult to navigate for anybody, even you know, a Jonathan Lewis or, or some of the other experts to go through and say, oh, well, 
that that's a bad SQL plan because of this. It's it's very difficult without understanding where time is being spent, how many rows are being accessed, um, not an estimate, but actual rows. And so explain plan is, uh, is while not useless, it's it's got very minimal ability to give you information as opposed to some of the other things that are available. So that's kind of my, my take on explain plan. Um, the actual execution plan is valuable. Uh, DBMS X plan, it's what we use in, in the live labs environments because it is text-based. It's easy to display. If you set the right parameters, statistics level equals all. And for what I usually do for database of memory is I add IO stats and the last execution, at least you get actual rows and actual time. Um, then it makes it a little bit easier to see where time is being spent, but you can do a lot better than this. So, and that's kind of, again, one of the, the points of the session today. And I should, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, say that even if you don't have an in, uh, a SQL monitor question, but if you put any questions that you come up with, stick them in the Q&A and I'll answer them. So we I'll try to make this as interactive as possible. So uh, feel free to just uh, uh, add questions in there and I'll, I'll try to get to all of them. If I can't figure out the answer, I will uh, talk to somebody who can and get back to you on that. So please feel free to, uh, to type in the Q&A. Um, and with that, we'll continue on. So really there are, uh, for SQL Monitor, so we, you, you have just the ba basic explain plan, which is really the optimizer's estimate of what he thinks is gonna happen. You have uh, the ability to use DMMS X plan and with statistics, statistics level equals all, you can um, run a query and see the execution plan and the actual statistics to an extent. Um, of course, that requires that you have the ability to run that SQL statement. It makes it a little harder after the fact. Um, and then you have SQL Monitor Active Reports or SQL Monitor Reports. There's actually three flavors of the reports. And I'm one of the points of this was to show um, uh, to show why the active report is really the only, in my opinion, the only one you should bother with. The text and the HTML just really aren't of anywhere near as much use. And I'm gonna show you some examples here. I do have a question. Any tips on or tricks uh, on to understand long plans in SQL Monitor? Yes. So that's one of the focuses of today. And I'm gonna reiterate uh, where time is spent. Focus on where the, the largest amount of time is spent and that will lead you into areas that you should focus on within the execution plan. And so I'll, we'll, I will definitely, we'll, we'll definitely touch on that. Um, I should, I'll mention again, you know, we have our previous Ask Tom session that we did on this and then SQL, or, uh, uh, <laughs> SQL. Maria has also a session or a, a video and I have links in the, in the end of the, this session to those. So those are some uh, useful uh, areas to go. I'm not gonna spend time really in this session of how to, why uh, certain plans aren't useful. What I'm really, my goal here is really to give you the tools so you can discover um, uh, hopefully where time is being spent, how to, to, to look at a uh, execution plan uh, going into all the different aspects of hash joins and vector group buys and, and whether, you, whether you should use an nested loops join versus a hash join. It's based on cost and cardinalities, and that's beyond the scope of what we can do today. But um, there are plenty of resources to help you with that. I mean, an excellent resource is Jonathan Lewis. Um, the Optimizer blog is also a, a, an excellent resource. Uh, uh, Nigel Bayliss, who writes the Optimizer blog, there, he's got lots of very good information out there. And so I would highly recommend those resources when you want to get into the nitty gritty or maybe optimize your transformations um, and such. But that's a little beyond what I want to do today. And so I think... Um, uh, we'll continue on. Uh, the other, another question, are the modifications that I'm talking about uh, limited to a particular database version? Not really. Um, it's really associated with the presentation of the information. As a matter of fact, some of the uh, SQL Monitor reports I'm going to show you today, I generated quite a long time ago, long before JET and the enhancements to SQL Monitor were available. And so they're still there. And so a lot of this is basically 
uh, SQL Monitor actor reports stand alone and analyze the execution plans. And there's a lot of information there that hasn't been exposed before. So it's not really uh, 12102. Um, I haven't tried anything on 11G, to be honest, but um, 19C, 21C. Um, and so it's not really database. I'm sure there are some things that won't show up in certain versions of the database, certainly features that weren't available, but the actual format of the of the actor report will be the same. So it will work on previous versions if you're still stuck on a <laughs> stuck on an older version. Um, you think about it, 12.1, 12.102 isn't even supported anymore except on extended support. So it's like an old version now. So anyways, um, I will continue on. So we've got, I've got that, we got that, and um, we'll go ahead and continue up. Oh, just done, done, and continue on. Oh, so what I wanted to do, whoops, let me go back. I got sidetracked there for a second. There we go. So at, so the text version. So I have a, actually a SQL that you can use to generate that, but I have it up here. And so we'll switch again to a new share. And hopefully this is the right one. Oops, nope, sorry about that. It is right there. So here's a text version of a SQL Monitor actor record. And notice it's not dissimilar to uh, what you see in DBMS XPlan that I showed at the very beginning. You get things like actual rows, uh, activity that's going on. You get a nice little summary up here. But notice that in the activity percent column over here on the right and activity details, they're blank. And that is a artifact of, well, it's actually a bug that nobody's going to fix. So the pro one of the big problems with using the text version, although, you know, cutting and pasting the actual execution plan is convenient if you want to put it in something. But um, what we were missing, a big chunk of what we're missing is the time spent in each of these execution steps. For instance, table access in memory full of part, or in our case, uh, the line order table, which is our larger table, 42 million rows. We don't see how much time was spent there other than going back and looking at um, time active. So you can kind of get that a flavor for that. But what if, uh, and I'll kind of talk about that in a minute, um, what if during the access of that, it's it, the reason it's uh, 21 seconds is because it went to disk rather than going to in memory because part of it wasn't uh, populated or maybe you're on rack and you didn't get the data distributed. So you didn't get to access the data across um, uh, the different column stores because you didn't enable parallel query. How would you see that here? And it's very difficult. So so that's my uh, so that's a text report and kind of my take on why that's not really you can do better. And so let's try the HTML version. And so let's see, that one is, sorry about navigating here, but um, my navigation a little, little off, but I had all these windows open for you guys. So here's the HTML report. So um, in the, and I'll go back, but we have text, we have HTML, we have active. People will run H, the HTML version thinking that that's going to give all the information and be the the way to go for uh, figuring out where time is spent. It's a tiny bit better, in the sense that now we can see I/O requests and you know half of them were write requests and half of them were read requests. Um, we can see in the I/O request that breakdown there. Uh, the active period doesn't do us much good other than we can see they'll tell us the time period. But we, we're still missing CPU activity and wait activity. And it's let's um, whether we agree with it or not, it isn't going to get fixed at least no time soon. So there's still limitations. And beyond it, to be honest, this format's kind of ugly. It, it, it's it's just not not a great format, and we're missing a lot of information. And so let's let's now go back or get to the good stuff. And so here's what the active report looks like now. Uh, Visually, it's a little bit nicer, but there's a whole bunch more stuff in here that's of, of use. So um, we will go through all of this in a second. I want to make sure I've got everything in my 
presentation I wanted to talk about. So let's actually flip back real quick. Sorry about having to go. I should just put it on the desktop, but then sometimes it's hard for you guys to see that. So back to here. So we covered text, HTML. Hopefully I've convinced you that if you're going to go to the effort of running a SQL monitor report, those are, are going to be lacking in information and the active reports really what we, we want to tackle. So we'll we'll get we'll dive into this a little bit further. But what I wanted to do, oh, there we go, is talk a little bit about uh, the active report itself, uh, just as a prelude so you can understand what's going on. So kind of talked about how to, how to get to it. Uh, one of the great things about SQL monitor reports and the active report as well is you don't have to bring together all the parallel query sessions or the different rack sessions. It's combined since the SQL monitor report can access the active data or the ASH data and the, um, uh, um, sorry, the AWR data within the database. So it actually will combine, and I'll show you an example of a, um, of a, a, a rack run query. So rather than, so if you were doing SQL trace, you'd have to put together the different traces for the parallel server processes to see a true view of what went on. SQL Monitor does that for you. Very nice, very, very nice. Um, and then I basically just kind of go through what we've already talked about with, you could use DBMS uh, um, X plan, you could use the other versions, but um, I think you're gonna find that this is really a nicer way to go. Uh, some caveats. Yes, you have to have the diagnostics and tuning pack because we're accessing ASH and AWR data, not because of SQL Monitor, but simply because if you touch a ASH or AWR data, or so that's an Oracle thing, you have to be licensed to do that. Um, statistics, statistics level in the database needs to either be typical or all. Unlike DMMS X plan, you don't have to set, do an alter session and set statistics level to all. You can, if it's typical, there's enough information that the, we, the, SQL Monitor can get to the data that it needs. And then you do have to have the control management, uh, the initialization parameter set to diagnostic and tuning for all this to work. So those are kind of the, the requirements. And then I put in here, and I've got in the session quite a few MOS notes that you can go back and look so you don't have to just take my word for it. But uh, by automatically, SQL Monitor information will be uh, gathered for your SQL executions if it runs in parallel. If it consumes at least five seconds of CPU or IO time, or if you've added the monitor hand. So sometimes in our database of memory queries, they run much faster. And I am going to talk a little bit about that. There's some caveats there, but, but faster than five seconds, or we don't do any IO. Um, and so you can actually set the monitor hint so that you can get a SQL monitor plan if you want to see did I make, just to make sure that say all of you access all of the data from the column store. So um, there is an override for that. And then I wanted to go one more. Um, there are some limits. Uh, and, and so I've got again, MOS notes here. If your SQL execution plan is longer than 300 lines, you can, it, uh, you won't get all of it in a SQL monitor report. So you can override that uh, with SQL uh, underscore parameter, SQL mon max uh, plan lines. Uh, and here is a, uh, there's a MOS note for that. You can also at the system level override the threshold of five seconds. I would uh, caution you about doing that because it may generate more workload on your system. If you're not all of a sudden you're gathering all sorts of very short running uh, uh, executions or queries with SQL Monitor when there may not be any real benefit of doing that since you're probably more interested in long running queries. And so five seconds is probably pretty reasonable even for database of memory. And one other thing, uh, I, so uh, and I'll just put this in here. We talked about this the last time. Uh, there's some, if you're curious, uh, and that actually kind of goes back to that question, can, is there any version limitations on the database? And no, and what wind up happening is that this format of the SQL monitor report that we were looking at is in JET, and previously it was flash-based. And so the format's a little bit different and the color's a little different, but the bottom line is, um, I just put through this in, if you're curious about, um, uh, the differences and why the SQL monitor reports look different nowadays than they did uh, prior when we used to do, when it used to be Flash. And I 
think. Ah, and then the new features, and we're going to actually go through that. But I will tell you that there are there's another MOS node which does talk about uh, some of the privileges, and so you don't need to have DBA or select catalog role any longer. So we've made it a little easier for uh, developers to access SQL Monitor active reports, and SQL Developer also has a version of a SQL Monitor active report. I don't think it's quite as nice, but as a quick and dirty, it, it gives you quite a bit of information there as well. So you don't even necessarily have to fire up um, a, uh, an actual report. If you have cloud control, enterprise manager with cloud control, it's going to capture most of these um, reports that you need. And you don't have, and so you can just go there and get the same exact report. So that's another um, uh, uh, value for people in cloud control. Um, I usually don't have that running. And so I'll wind up asking for it to be done um, by by hand, if you will. And I have a, 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 at the end, I have a tech brief that describes how to do that. So I'm not going to go into that here. Um, but the previous session and then that tech brief, which again, the link will is in um, the end of this presentation is on our resources page. It's a nice write-up that I did that explains how to generate the active report in the first place. So if you have, if you get stuck with that. So it looks like I had another question here. Uh, so the question is, as extending the limit to more than 300 lines will increase database demand or assume resource usage, our DBA has decided against doing so. Is there any substance to this? Well, you know, to be honest, uh, that may, it's, it's obviously if you're parsing more than 300, well, the database is already doing it. So to be honest, the answer would be no. Um, in, in by limiting your ability to see very long or large execution plans, you have no ability then to go in and diagnose uh, the resource usage. So you actually might get a, a net benefit if you can make those queries run faster because there's some issue, but you can't see it or at least see, um, maybe you can run a regular DBMS X plan. And so I would suggest that that's not the place to be saving resources because it isn't going to save you any significant resources. And the downside is the actual application will then performance can suffer because you can't get access to see, gee, we shouldn't be doing that or there's this or whatever in the execution plan. So I would suggest that that's kind of, um, that's, that's a roadblock that probably shouldn't be there. That would be my opinion. Now that's, you know, you're, I'm not going to get, I don't want to get in a, 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 an argument with your DBA, but realistically that seems like a, a not a great place to be limiting uh, access to how your application is running. So I would suggest that going, if you have the case where some of your plans are longer than 300 lines, um, that you ought to be able to override that and get access to those. Um, and you know, maybe you can work with them and convince them that maybe we don't need to do this for everything, but there are cases where it would be of value. So, um, and you could do that, you know, the, the, the data is gonna be captured. So the issue is really can SQL monitor process that. And so um, you might wanna uh, revisit that. Hopefully that helps. All right, where was I? Uh, so now we're into the new features, kind of the meat of this. So I'm gonna uh, make sure that I haven't missed anything. We'll come back to this in a minute. So I'll just go through to reiterate. So you'll have a record of this. So now I'm gonna actually put not only the presentation, but I'll put the SQL monitor reports that we're gonna, we're looking at on GitHub as well. So if you wanna follow along later, even with the, um, the uh, we're obviously I'm recording this, but if you wanna go play around with something and don't, have the ability to create that in your environment for whatever reason, um, you know, you can go and and, and actually run this because it's just HTML file. So I'll, I'll make this available, but let me sh uh, change over back to this, hopefully the right place. Yes. And let's take a little bit of look at this. So I don't want to go through all of the SQL monitor report itself simply because I'll, I'll do a little bit of it, but uh, because we've done this before, but notice that um, you have text here, but you have a tab here. So we'll take a look at the text in a minute. Completed. So sometimes I'll get folks that will give where this is still running. That's not as valuable as seeing the entire completion. Of course, if your query is running for hours and you're going to plan on killing it, then maybe that's the best you can do. But you can see the status is completed. Um, there is information. I'll 
see if I can bring up one that has rack information so you can see information about uh, your rack environment as well, how many instances were accessed uh, <clears throat> in it. This one doesn't have that. So it is somewhat context sensitive. In other words, you won't see things if if it's if it's serial or if it's single instance, but um, it does expand here. So that's the general view. See how long it took, the execution ID and who ran it. Um, the time and wait section, one of the interesting things to notice always in one of the, and we saw a little bit of that in HTML, is that um, if you highlight or not highlight, if you just navigate, you can see that it ran for 5.8 minutes, so 100% of the time. Well, that's not all that interesting there, but what about database time? Now we see that we spent 88% of our time on user IO and only 11% of our time on CPU. So it's kind of nice that you can differentiate that time by just hovering over it. And wait activity, we wait in on IO and read and write IO. And then IO, uh, and I'll show you one with exadata. There's some uh, other additional information, but again, same kind of thing. And then in the execution section, so one of the things that's been added, which I think is kind of cool, is the ability to make that full screen. So you can just click. So you've kind of got the overall flavor. So you want to look at the execution plan, but it's really long. It would be nice to have a little more space so you can just do that. Now we see the entire execution plan. Kind of cool. Um, uh, what else is there to highlight here? The uh, So for new stuff, uh, the other big well, the thing I think is the biggest added uh, bonus is notice this more columns. So uh, not only has operation cost, so cost was always missing from SQL Monitor active reports. So now we can see the cost of the operations, what the optimizer thought the cost was gonna be. And then uh, very often in, um, uh, especially with database and memory, sometimes we wind up, you wind up running the query very fast in the column store and then you spend all this time sorting it. So, so you can see the IO requests, Notice I keep, I'm going to keep adding. Um, you can see if you went to temp, you can add all these columns. And, and of course, the, the disadvantage of that is notice it got wider and wider. So maybe you don't, uh, in this particular case, we don't really care about temp. We didn't spend, actually we did, but we'll just say we didn't. So we'll just get rid of temp. We'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of this. Just to make it a little easier to see. And you can resize this. The only thing that's missing out of, the JET version is used to be able to move these columns. So I can't move, I always would move the line numbers over to the far left, just personal preference. But uh, that makes it difficult. You can resize this. One, it's kind of a bug though. You wind up having to get the operation resized. You have to resize one of the other ones and then we can move this over. And I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Hopefully that'll be easier to see. And notice it just, so then you got to go back. So there's, you know, it's, it is what it is. So the uh, nice thing about SQL Monitor actor reports is we can then, for, for say this hash group by, we can see that we spent some time on CPU. We did, so when we did, we had to go through and do some uh, uh, IO. So basically we spill for the group by. So this is useful. Uh, I think. And then within memory, we can actually, and I'll bring one up, but we can differentiate CPU time, normal CPU time versus in-memory CPU time. And I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, that as well, because it makes it a little easier to, um, uh, to uh, determine where your time was spent. Um, notice, and I'll get to the question. So I have a question about uh, uh, the, the three arrows, and I'll, I'll go over there. And I haven't played around with those a whole lot, but it allows you basically to navigate within very large execution plans. So I'll look at that in a second. But I wanted to highlight, notice these guys, they're highlighted in red. So what, what basically what, uh, what what's going on here is that notice the estimated rows was 25, but the actual rows is uh, 1.7 million. So what it's doing is it's highlighting to you where cardinalities went way out of whack. And typically in your analysis of an execution plan, that's a red flag, no pun intended. <laughs> Basically, the, if the optimizer thinks it's gonna get 25 rows and gets 42 million instead, 
then it probably didn't create the most optimal plan. And, and so that's worth investigating. So that helps give you, so not only would you like to target, let's see if we can make this a little bigger, the largest places where time is spent, in other words, 44% or half the execution time was spent on this hash join. So that would be something to, to focus on. And we did a lot of IO, so we did a lot of writing to temp, and maybe I should bring up the temp uh, guy back so that we can see just how much IO, 1.7 gigabytes. Um, and so, but the, the, the point of all of this is really that we're, it's gonna highlight for you where cardinality mismatches went just ballistic, went way out of whack. And so that's, that's useful. Uh, there are other options, plan notes, useful cardinality feedback. So we, so the optimizer uh, got statistics feedback. So plan stability, it's likely that the next iteration of this uh, execution could change um, based on cardinality feedback. And so that's interesting to see. Um, and that brings up a whole nother uh, a topic, which I won't dive into, but optimizer, the optimizer blog would be a place to go uh, search if you want to understand what cardinality feedback, what's going on there, or statistics feedback. Um, and let's see, what else is on here? So we've done higher uh, full screen mode, uh, more columns that we can display, the cost based on the cost. So obviously the optimizer thinks the cost the cost of accessing the data is very low compared to processing that data. Um, response time was there before. Tabular execution, graphical, and you guys can play with this. This existed before. Um, it's uh, uh, I don't know if it's changed all that much, but you can, I don't typically use the graphical part. I use the tabular, but it's there. Um, view options. So there is some, a little bit of help in here to help uh, help you with that. So the arrows. So using, so basically if the little eye or the information, so you can kind of talk about this. So it's basically the arrows are all about um, being able to uh, uh, navigate very large plans. So this is only um, 21 row or 21 lines. So it's not that hard to navigate, but being able to go to the top, being able to go to the parent operation, if we were uh, noticed, and this is a true with the previous version as well, you can collapse some of these things. For instance, you know, to be honest, uh, not that guy. I do this sometimes. Is we probably don't need. Well, we do actually. So we 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 have thirty percent, and so that's over seventy percent. There are cases where you you can actually ignore portions of the execution plan because you don't really care what's going on because they didn't they didn't contribute much time to the overall plan. So you can collapse those in, in and when I want to collapse it too far because I'll miss out on things. But if it's a very large plan, you may only need to focus on a very small portion of it. So you can actually collapse that and then use these arrows to navigate. To be honest, I haven't really spent a lot of time uh, playing with this part of it. And that's not really my point. My point was to point out that it's there. So now that you know that it's there, you might want to go take a look at that. Uh, as, uh, so a couple of questions, sorry. So um, so the navigate um, and the usefulness of that, um, the parent-child relationship and navigating within the um, execution plan. Again, I will confess that I typically have, I don't use that. So I don't really, um, but it's there if you, choose to use it. It's like everything else with Oracle. We give you lots of, of options and abilities to do things, and not all of them are useful in any particular instance, but there may come a point in a very large execution plan where that would make sense to look at. Is this because the stats are out of sync? Possibly. Possibly DBMS stats got run or didn't get run, and but realistically, this area is maybe not because if you notice the actual axis of, of objects, sorry, let's see, make this so we can see it. Um, there. there we go. If you notice the axis of our, in this particular case, this is an SSB query. So line order, date, dimension, supplier, customer, part, these are our, uh, uh, light orders are fact tables, same same schema that I use for a lot of my demos. Um, notice that there we're pretty much in sync. We are the 
estimate the, the estimated rows that the optimizer um, calculated that it was going to access came out pretty close to what it thought where we went haywire was when it's, we started with this hash group by where we wound up the optimizer thought it was going to get 25 rows back and got 42 million. So more than likely, this isn't a, a purely a stats problem. It could be a correlation problem. In other words, it doesn't understand that there's a correlation, but this might require further digging to figure out why this went, went off the off the rails. And so um, it, it might not be, so it's probably not table stats per se that's that's gone off the rail. It could be the fact that, um, and I, to be honest, I don't off the top of my head remember what the deal was with this, but actually, oh yeah, I do. <laughs> I'm sorry, I generated this. This is actually in the process of statistics feedback and the optimizer is trying to figure out the most effective plan. And so this was actually in the middle of that. I used this example because it gave me not so much because we're performance tuning, but because it gave me a longer running query that I could show you all of these different pieces of. So the, ultimately this plan, and it's in the live labs environment as well, you can actually run it, is, is actually will do um, a vector group items will run very, very fast. But so then in this particular case, it's because the optimizer chose a suboptimal plan and I don't want to get into the details of that, but it's in the process. That's the Cardinelli feedback note in the plan notes, which makes it useful. Is the, so this is in the process of evolving or adaptive cursor sharing, where it's uh, not adaptive cursor sharing, just statistics feedback, where it's actually going through and saying, oh, I got different cardinalities than I thought I was going to get, so I'm going to re-optimize the query. So it does this four or five times uh, in order to get to the right execution plan. Um, that's probably more detail than anybody wanted to know, but hopefully that kind of answers your question. So I will, I got all those answered for you and continue on. So anyways, uh, so I didn't want to focus just strictly on this. So now I was gonna bring some special cases in. And so we are, so I have, as I mentioned, good, you can still see that. So here is a query that ran on rack. And notice now we'll see that in the execution plan, we highlight, we see we have a degree of parallelism of three because we have a three node rack system. So and you can see now that it was a rack query um, and that's not all that important other than, uh, well, that's the important part. The actual query isn't super important, but the other thing is notice now, and I have this in the slides, um, the duration, ran in four seconds. So the query ran basically in four seconds, but notice the database time is huge. Why, what's going on? Well, if you notice it's almost 12 seconds, four times three. So, you know, parallel query can make a query run faster, but it isn't necessarily gonna use less overall resources. And so one of the questions you you'll have or may find um, is why, did the, why is the duration so much different than the database time? And database time being, you know, uh, uh, Oracle database time, and it was made up of all the different components of the execution. And so this is common for parallel query commands because, or executions because um, we're running multiple degree of parallelism, trying to make the overall response time faster. Um, but it means that we're gonna still do the total amount of work of 12 seconds, but we're gonna give it back to you faster because we have, it's in parallel. Hopefully that makes sense. But it's worth pointing out that uh, you do see par uh, drawn in and you can see this now. I didn't explore some of these others, so let's go do that now. Um, parallel. So now we can see, and this existed in the previous version of SQL Monitor um, reports. And so we see instance one, instance two, instance three. So we can see what happened within the parallelization and the parallel server processes that ran not only on the node where, you know, the, the um, main node where the parallel query coordinator was, but also across the other nodes as well. So we don't have to go piece together data from the other nodes as you would if you were doing say SQL trace, um, you can do this, it, SQL monitor gives this to you all here. SQL text, so you can see the text of in a little nicer format than prior versions. We can see the SQL text that we ran the activity was is still the, is basically the same as it was uh, in previous versions, and so you can see uh, across 
the snaps, if you will, or notice that, so uh, SQL Monitor depends on ASH data. I'm gonna talk a little bit about this in a minute. Um, and so it's sample data. Every second it gets sampled. So we see across the sampling of the running of our query, where do we spend time in total? Metrics, that's again, the same uh, um, in, uh, uh, section that was in the previous SQL Monitor reports. Um, and we can see the CPU across the execution plan, our PGA usage for memory. Um, if we were doing IO, uh, these would be populated. So you can get a view of what's going on uh, overall in the overall execution plan. And then one of the nice things is it gives you the optimizer uh, environment. So before you might've had to go to an optimizer trace file to get this information, but you can see now that if certain uh, Parameters have been set that would affect your execution and the optimizer as it gathers and parses your query, you can see what those are set to for that execution right here, which is kind of nice. And then an outline gives you, if you were to try to uh, create, recreate that uh, execution, it gives you the outline data. And that's also quite nice. Uh, most of the time, couldn't care less, but there are times um, when this will highlight um, transformations, other things that go on within the optimizer. Again, beyond the scope of what we're, we're going to talk about today, but it may be valuable in understanding why the execution plan did what it did, how you might want to repeat that, what's going on under the covers without having to go look at an optimizer trace file. And I would point you uh, for further information to the optimizer blog and some of Nigel's posts. So what, are, what else? I think that's everything here. I have a few more. Ah, I will, now this is an in-memory thing. I'm just gonna highlight, because uh, we haven't talked about this section of it yet, but, um, and I have, uh, we've done a, a, another session, but this is just useful. So notice in our query, we have both binoculars and then we have the access and filter predicate that you can highlight. So you still get that information in a, uh, like a DBMSX plan, you'll get different sections below the, sorry, different sections below the execution plan. And here you can just click on this and say, oh, okay, so this is the filter predicates we had. So we're filtering down based on discount and um, access predicates. Um, here doesn't do us much good and we're not using indexes. So that's not gonna, but we see our join, our join key. But then we have the binoculars. The binoculars come into use for a bunch of different reasons. In our case here, we've talked about this before, we see columnar encodings leveraged. And the reality and what's going on behind the scenes is we actually have a, a join group defined uh, between date dim and line order. And so this says that we leveraged that join group. And I've got a blog post that talks about that. I'm not, my point isn't to highlight join groups so, so much is that there is more information available in the binoculars section. So sometimes it's worth exploring that. And I have, let me, let me close out those. We'll go back to our original. And then I have another one. We introduced in 21C something called in-memory uh, deep vectorization. And so on a hash join, we can now leverage SIMD vector processing. And you can see the results of that by, again, the binoculars. And so here, deep vector hash joins and join flags. The bottom line is seeing deep vector hash joins means that we actually leveraged our deep vectorization to further enhance our hash join. Now, you might ask, well, how come that doesn't show up in the execution plan? And the reason both for join groups and, and um, uh, deep vectorization is that uh, they um, leverage or their runtime decisions and not controlled by the optimizer itself. So the optimizer doesn't know at parse time that it's gonna be able to leverage or that the execution is gonna leverage deep vectorization. And so this is how it gets reported back. You can argue whether that's good or bad. And again, I have, we've done um, some, I've done some blog posts and some uh, other Ask Tom Office Hour sessions if you wanna get into the details. Really my point of this was just to show that, you know, you can click on these binoculars for, I should, I, 
for more information about what happened in particular steps within the execution or the execution without having to necessarily go somewhere else. Uh, one other thing I do want to point out, though, notice here we have the example where the color for the CPU usage for in memory is different than normal CPU time. I don't know if this has yeah. So that's the color in in this and in, in, in the jet environment for normal CPU time. And then here's the color for CPU in memory time. And this is valuable for folks running database of memory. That's, uh, that's near and dear to my heart because it's possible that if this was say back, go back to our, well, uh, well it doesn't, well, we will go back and anyway, I'll do it. So we'll go back to our parallel. So this was parallel query. We had three nodes involved. I don't have, I wasn't smart enough to, to grab the example, but notice here, all of that data for the uh, line test table was accessed in memory. It is possible if say the DOP was only one, that this would be partially CPU in memory and partially IO. And that would be a clue that, oh, something went wrong. We weren't able to access all of our data in memory. If we hadn't separated this out, we wouldn't, we wouldn't know that uh, the CPU we spent was uh, only was in memory versus some other CPU. So it's very valuable, I think, in being able to um, troubleshoot or even measure the benefit of database and memory using CCommander Active Reports, another reason why I'm, we're doing this in the first place. Um, so what I wanna do, I'm gonna go back and talk a little bit about this, because this is actually kind of interesting and I don't think everybody necessarily is aware. And so how we got that. So it isn't magic, sort of magic, but not really. So let me go back to my presentation real quick. And again, keep the questions coming if you have any further questions. So we've talked about um, cost being available in the more columns section, the rows being cardinality estimates being out of whack, the optimizer environment, the outline section, and the full screen mode. Yay, I got all of those covered. Okay, so in the activity column. So we talked quite a bit about this. Um, if it's blank, so I'll flip back in a second, it means, means there, wasn't a, there wasn't any significant time spent there. And so really what we're focused usually on is the sections of the plan that consume the most time, because that's where we're gonna get, if we can optimize that or at least understand why the time was spent there, that can give us the biggest bang for the buck. If, if we're not spending any time on something, we can kind of ignore it at that at, in, in the way that works. So, um, so there, this is the answer to CPU and memory and all the other corresponding um, uh, portions of the activity bars that are in the SQL monitor report. We're getting this from active session history. And so there's, I don't know if everybody, I don't think a lot of people are necessarily aware of it, but uh, in the ASH views, there are, and I have a very small screen of this, hopefully you can see this. Um, in V$ Active Session History, we actually, there actually are column values associated with things like in-memory, uh, parsing, um, different uh, uh, time being spent that are essentially what, what John Brestenowitz calls bit vector magic. And so I have a his presentation where he goes into quite a bit of detail about how this works and why they did it this way. Suffice it to say that if we're looking at only a, a second snapshot, the trying to break down all the different time timings within that to say exactly how much time was spent is relatively expensive. And so what the guys in, under the covers did was just say, we'll just set, if we know that we spent time in, in, in memory CPU, we're just gonna set a, a vector. We're just gonna set a bit. And so it makes it very lightweight uh, to display the different within each ASH sampling where the time was spent during that sampling. And so it makes it very lightweight to be able to do that. So it doesn't incur a bunch of overhead, but yet gives us a clue. And for us being in memory, there's actually several in memory columns in that view, gives us some valuable information and clues into what's going on during the execution. So anyways, if you do a Google search on that, I actually, I'd, I'd seen this 
kind of before, but it didn't sink in till I happened to go to the RMUG session or the Rocky Mountain Oracle user group um, training days in 2020 and, and sat in on John's session. And I thought it was excellent. So I would uh, strongly encourage you to uh, do a Google search on that presentation. I didn't find it in um, uh, the RMUG training days downloading. I, I That's how I got the session, but uh, I need to talk to John and see if I he would have a problem with me posting it, say on my on the GitHub or maybe on our um, resources page. But uh, it's a great presentation, but it kind of explains what's going on under the covers with the ASH data that allows us to get all of this cool information in the SQL Monitor report. So I thought it was worth highlighting that to you guys, just so that uh, you knew that it existed. Um, however, let's go back to the sampling. So one of the risks with the ASH data for very short running Query. So, if it was, so for instance, um, let me go back real quick to this guy. This query, this query only ran in, in four seconds. So, if we're sampling that data over, and if say say let's say you put a monitor in, and your query runs only in one second or two seconds, then that data that we're getting for, out of Ash is going to be a uh, some of dubious value because it's a, such a small sample rate. It's really meant for much longer time periods, like you know the tens, twenties, you know minutes of time where that becomes more valuable. So you have to be a little careful recognizing that this isn't a SQL trace data where we're getting absolute perfect timings down to the centisecond or microsecond. We're really getting a sampling at the second level, which goes back to John's presentation where he talks a little bit about some of the things, the compromises they made to make that useful data. But just recognize that there is a risk in very, very short execution times of getting uh, complete uh, data in, in, in this section here and understanding that. So in here we know, I mean, four samples, four seconds, we spent quite a bit of time there, but just recognize that this isn't going to be necessarily perfect because it is still sample data. I'd like to just point that out. So let me go back real quick. And, um, and so that's what this is about. So, um, but in most cases, you can ignore it, it's fine. Um, but just recognize that um, there are still cases where uh, a SQL trace file for very short running queries may be more valuable than necessarily SQL monitor, other than getting the execution plan, the actual and uh, actual rows, all that stuff's gonna be fine, but the timings themselves may be somewhat uh, fuzzy, if you will. Um, and then I wanted to highlight a couple of things and like, you know what, I, I, I give up, I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just going to share my screen at this point because it's just going to be easier. And if, if you have a hard time seeing, we can go back. But um, so you should be able to see my whole screen. And so in the duration and database time, I already talked a little bit about in this particular case, see how far out of whack the duration versus database time. It can go the other way as well. And one of the reasons for that is that um, Harsh time isn't going to be accounted for in a SQL Monitor active report. So it's actually in the ASH data, but SQL Monitor doesn't, doesn't show you. Uh, what it will do is you'll see a duration longer, perhaps, if that's a significant contributor, than the database time. So that's something where maybe um, session level statistics or a SQL trace file could be more valuable if you're seeing very long parse times and you want to break that down and, and understand how much that time is contributing. So there's, so, you know, SQL Monitor isn't perfect. It's, it is really good though. Um, Non-idle wait events because database time doesn't count non-idle wait events. So if you're spending all sorts of time on SQL message from client transferring a bunch of rows, you aren't necessarily going to see that time in a SQL Monitor report uh, other than in duration. You won't get it broken down because we're not going to report in database time things like what we call idle wait events, which aren't necessarily really idle um, when we're transferring a whole boatload. If you're, if you're sending millions of rows back to your uh, application tier, then the duration of the query is going to still extend, but the database time could be very small. So there are reasons for the discrepancies, and I just kind of wanted to point that out. And then we've already talked about the parallel query. Um, and then this might be a reason, again, to use DBMS X plan and or 
have session stats available. And uh, that's one of the reasons we do that in live labs. The other reason is because it's it's easier and faster. And I think I'm going to update the live labs to use uh, session, the full statistics level with actual and, and uh, estimated and actual, uh, as I was doing all of this and preparing, realized it would actually be kind of valuable to have that in there, which I don't currently do. I just do a without statistics level because it was simpler uh, and just kind of showing the execution plan. But um, I think I may update that in the live labs environment uh, so that we uh, make that a little more accurate. Uh, a question. So if duration is longer than data database time for a parallel query, does that mean that parallel query is harming performance? No. So if duration, whenever duration is longer than the actual database time, it means we're not telling you what would happen. Very often um, you could have uh, other, um, usually all of the, uh, the non-idle the non weight events will show up, but um, the, uh, it could be parse time. Uh, with rack, uh, you could see longer parse times. Um, if the query, typically what you, and you'll see this in where uh, duration is uh, relatively short. Um, but no, it, it don't make assumptions. Uh, you kind of have to dig into the details to understand that. And if it's not showing up in a SQL Monitor actor report, then there are other tools that then you might have to to go to, but it's a, a quick way of discovering that that's an issue. And then, then it might be worth going to the other areas um, to, to discover what's going on there um, as opposed to, because um, like I said, this isn't going to be absolutely perfect. 99% of the cases, a SQL monitor actually report is fine. Even development will ask sometimes, well, you know what, now we've, we've seen where the problem is. We need to, to trace that portion of the code or skip more details to, to dive further into that. And so you, you, we are still limited in a SQL Monitor Actor report of between the AWR and the ASH data. And it only gets us so far. But in like I said, in most cases, this gives us more than enough information to tackle where things are at. So hopefully that answers your question. So that was answered. The URL for Live Labs. At the end, I'll, I'll show it to you in a second. It's um, And it's on our resources page. So all those URLs are in here. I will get to it. And I, actually, we might we might get to it right now. So let me flip back just so that in case it is hard to see. I don't know if it is. I've had that complaint in past sessions. So um, that covers this. Additional resources. So I listed out um, with links uh, the uh, how to generate it, I, that's a tech brief I wrote. It's on our resources page. Uh, I mentioned Maria Colgan's video that talks about SQL monitors, if, they, if you're interested there. It is talked about in the SQL tuning guide and I listed all the MOS notes that I've referenced. So if you wanna go back and dig into the nitty gritty of details, you can. I always hate it when people put things in presentations with no collaboration or no background to that. So I try, always try to give you the ability to go back and look if you want more details on something I've said. And so here's the live labs. Uh, here's the bit.ly you can do to go live labs. For that matter, you can just Google uh, live labs and it'll come up because it's been very, very popular. The reason I have this here is just to show that if you select the free tenancy reservation, you can run live labs without having to have um, other than having to have an oracle.com ID. Um, you don't have to have any cloud credits or pay anything to 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 use it. So you can just go and use it, run Live Labs. There's all sorts of information and directions on how to, to do it. And you get your own cloud environment. And we have I have the Live Labs environment. You can run all these these scripts or, or and you can generate SQL monitor reports if you want. And you can transfer them back to your um, desktop and display them. I don't know if you can run Firefox. You might be able to run it within the tenancy. I don't remember. I don't think I've ever tried that. Um, but anyways, it's very easy because you can always cut and paste the output of the HTML and stick it in the text file and then display it on your on your uh, browser, if you will, on your desktop. So easy to use. And then this is what I was talking about, the blogs.oracle.com in dash memory is the blog. Got lots of technical articles and information. And then the, the resources page, which is hangs off of that. Um, but that's the full URL to it uh, and all the links to GitHub. I'm, I'm going to post all this on GitHub. 
uh, on the Ask Tom set, site. It, for instance, to answer your question, where's the URL? Right on when you went in, remember at the very beginning I showed you on the Ask Tom, under that resources section down below, the Live Labs URL was there as well. It's all over the place. So it should not be a problem to get to our Live Labs environment. Another question, where can we access the present from this set? So and previous ones. So the presentations themselves are on, on my GitHub um, in PDF format. And so you can go look at that. And that GitHub URL is on this resources page. Uh, I, maybe it's not on the Ask Tom resources section. If it's not, I'll stick it on there. But um, and then I've been including not only the presentation, but scripts, or in this case, what I'll do is I'll load up the um, these SQL monitor reports we've been looking at so that you can actually just display them if you want and kind of root around in them without having to go generate something um, that might not be as uh, interesting as maybe some of the more detail that's in these reports. So try to make all this available because believe me, I want you guys to use this because when you come asking questions about, gee, why did this happen? And I ask for a SQL monitor actor report, you'll say, oh yeah, here it is. We've got it right here for you. So hopefully that answers that guy and that one. And did I cover everything that I wanted in our, oh, no, I didn't. One, one last thing before we, oh, we're, and we're over. Well, I will include it, but I will display it. Sorry, I got too busy talking. If you're still with us and you wanna, uh, I'll, I'll highlight this. If you have Exadata and notice that here in the IO section, it's telling you what benefit you got from your table access storage fulls here. Notice table access storage full. So that's an exit day. We did a smart scan. We did a smart scan. We might've even gone uh, to sell memory if you had database and memory enabled, but it will also highlight cell memory, the offload efficiency. So you got benefit versus just a straight table access and memory full. You got, uh, 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 smart scan benefit. So lots of stuff that's in these. I won't pretend to have told you everything. These are all the highlights that I've come across that I think are useful. And so um, with that, we're almost out of time. Looks like I have at least one more question. I'll answer that. I apologize for running over, but I guess I got a little carried away. Uh, also, I ran a test and found when using Oracle Client 21C, I was able to use the same report as you had. However, Client 12C was producing an outdated report. Um, so I showed you that note that the JET was introduced. So I don't know why you got an outdated report as far as um, seeing still seeing flash, but you should have seen the JET version of it. So you might want to go back and try that again. Um, with that, I want to try to close up because we did. I did go over. I apologize for that. Oh, you couldn't see that. Sorry. Um, I'll just put this real quick and then we'll close up. Thank you very much for attending. Uh, here's what I was pointing to. Whoops, was this guy right here. And notice it's, oh, well, that's the 20th, this guy. That's the, well, that's 2017. So I lost it. So it was 2016. So you can always look in this execution started, see the time frame when your query was run. So with that, I will go ahead and conclude. Thank you very much all for attending. And this will be recorded um, and I'll post that. And I will post all of the examples and the PDF of the presentation on GitHub. So thank you very much for attending and we'll see you next time.